Hello everyone and welcome to another video in my classic collection series where I revisit some of my older vacuum cleaners and give you an updated video in glorious high definition. This particular vacuum cleaner featured on my channel a few years ago. You can still find the original video but I thought I would do a nice updated version for you. So today I'll be looking at the Hoover Microspace Compact Vacuum Cleaner. Now this used to be called, before Hoover named it Microspace, I believe it was named Micro Power. But I think they changed the name because if you see Micro Power in a title of a vacuum cleaner, you might think, oh, it's not very powerful. Micro means small, microscopic. So they've changed it to Microspace. And obviously the micro in this case means it's a very compact little vacuum. This is not going to be an official unboxing because it has been unboxed before. But anyway, it is in the box, so I will take it out of the box. I believe I am missing a cleaning tool from this, and I must actually, if I can still get the cleaning tools for this, I must actually get them, because I like to have everything complete. First thing out of the box is a standard carpet and floor nozzle, plastic sole plate for this, with some nice Hoover branding on it anyway. Second thing, ah, oh, well that's, it shouldn't belong in here, but it does fit. Anyway, this doesn't belong, so toss that to one side. It, it fits the vacuum. I think it was because I was going to sell this at some point, and I put that nozzle in with the machine. But it didn't sell, and I'm glad it didn't, because I, I, I wouldn't sell it now. So anyway, here's the hose. Same fitting as you got on the old Hoover Compacts from the first generation compacts right up to the, I think the Vogue's had this sort of fitting. And you've got your handle, little trigger release suction valve there. It's about one and a half, no, is it? Yeah, it's about one and a half meters, I think, that hose in length. We have two extension tubes in chrome, not telescopic. Here's another nozzle that I forgot was in here. <laughs> it does fit, but it's not meant for this cleaner, so we'll toss it aside like an unwanted thing. Um, also, unusually, we have a carrying strap for this machine. Yes, you can wear it like a handbag if you want to, if you want to go out on the town with a vacuum cleaner on your shoulder. You can do, there's nothing stopping you. You might be carted off, but uh, it's up to you. If you want to do that you can. Right, there's nothing else apart from, well, I've got some bags. I think, well it says Ariane and Telios. I think these are the same bags. I'm not sure. I don't think so. So I think that's something that again, toss it away because it's not relevant. They are different. Here is a packet of bags. Again because I was going to sell it, I was going to include this spare packet of bags. These are H22S bags. Designed for the micro space, and if you see underneath, it also says micro power. Genuine Hoover spare part, pack of five, unopened. Also got the instruction book, micro space and micro space plus. It's got 2001 actually on the back of this. Now the Microspace Plus, I believe they did one with electronic speed control. I think that's what the Plus is. And it might have had telescopic tubes, I'm not sure. Doesn't look like it. But there is, I'll show you where it would go, but on the, this little illustration there, just in the middle of your picture, that shows a little dial, that would be the electronic motor speed control, but on this one, which is a, a standard microspace, that is replaced by a Hoover logo. So we don't have electronic control on this particular one. I'll just show you actually the tools that I'm missing. Um, or tool, I'm seeing, oh, am I missing, I'm missing that as well, am I? I'm not really sure if, I think I'm missing, no I won't, yes, I th yes, I think I'm missing the whole thing, I'm thi I can't really remember what this came with, but there's no parking bracket on this, now whether the parking bracket came as standard with this or not, but on the parking bracket, 
there was a set of tools, a little crevice stall and a dusting brush. I think, I think in order to make this machine complete again, I better, after I've done this video, go on a few websites and just see if I can get that part because it's incomplete without that. I don't think there's anything else in the box. Let's just take the tiny, tiny little vacuum cleaner out. No, that's it. A little bit dusty. I should have really given this a bit of a polish beforehand, but anyway, I'm sure you won't mind a little bit of dust. It's very hard to judge how tiny this vacuum is. It is pretty small. I can actually lift it. Lift it at arm's length. Just, ooh. It's probably bigger. Dyson's smallest vacuum was, um, I think it was a DC-26, was it? And it would fit on an A4 piece of paper, the footprint. This is bigger. The footprint of this is, a, is bigger than an A4. In fact, vacuum cleaners of this sort of size are fairly common now. But when this machine was um, a current model, it was classed as a pretty compact machine. Many of our cylinder vacuums were absolutely huge. I'm thinking of the Sensortronics. I've got an AEG model that um, arrived faulty. You can check back on my channel if you want to see that. And there's, I've got a Bosch one, and they're absolutely massive. But this one, little dinky thing. So, try to blow the dust off. Let's uh, show you this machine in a little bit more detail. So here we have the vacuum laid out, missing of course a couple of bits. It's one of those many mysteries what happened to that part. I've been looking in other boxes. I don't have a huge number of vacuum cleaners anymore and I've been looking in all the ones I've got boxed up. Thought they might have found its way into a Telios box or something but no. So it's a mystery. It's a mystery as Toya once sung. Okay. Let's have a little look in a bit more detail at the little vacuum itself. It's 1300 watts, so it packs a punch for such a small vacuum cleaner, 1300 watt motor. This is what I was talking about at the bottom of the machine where the deluxe version, I've forgotten what they called it now, <laughs> but anyway, there was a virgin, version, version, Vir virgin, no, sorry, vir vir I said it right in the first place, version, cut, no, leave it in, I've got too much to do, I'll have to leave that in, vir version, <laughs> I've got, I've got, uh, my mind's on other things, now, the, the virgin, the version, oh, I don't know, I should give up, the, anyway, I'm not saying that word again, <laughs> There was one that had a doobie, a dial. This one just has a blank piece, but it's not just blank. It's rather nicely finished off with a Hoover logo. You've got your foot operated on off and your foot operated auto cord rewind. Now again, there's another little blank piece, blanking part here. I assume it's possibly would have been on a more deluxe, I'm saying deluxe, deluxe, ver no, deluxe model. There might have been a bag check indicator light there, I'm not sure. You've got parking bracket, which of course, in my case, yeah, I know, it's not useless. It's not useless. Perhaps it didn't come, I don't know. It does have, on the main nozzle, you do have the parking bit, so you can actually park it. It doesn't actually need, so perhaps it didn't come with that. But I think it must have come with another nozzle, at least one other nozzle. I'll have to check back on, uh, see if I've got any brochures and it'll show me which bits came with this. Two large wheels out the back, swivel caster, it's quite smooth. Oh, there's another slot there. Ah, so it did, yes. There is another slot at the top. So that slot would have been for a bracket that would, would have fitted onto the tube. So you could actually store, store it like that. So yes, I, th I think there was something missing. Either side, just above the wheels, this is where we attach the carry strap. I won't attach it yet because it will restrict my movement. Here we go. There's all the information for any of you who want to see 
the rating plate. I think this was another EC model, it's certainly not Chinese. It's either Cambus Lang in Scotland or it could have been the Lisbon factory in Portugal that manufactured this. I don't think, well it would say France, I mean the Dijon factory in France I think closed before this machine was produced because most of the Hoover cylinder vacuums, the Sensotronics, Compacts, Vogues, etc were actually made in France. So yes that's the cleaner, here's where the flex comes out at the back. I don't think it's got a very long flex. Being a compact vacuum cleaner it was meant for people with smaller homes so you wouldn't need such a long cable. And it's stopped there. Yes, possibly five meters. Six stages of filtration. Here we have the little catch to remove the bag door. Comes completely off. And inside, I actually have used this machine because I've noticed there's a bit of dirt in here. Here we have the bag and that should seal. No, it's not going to because that's broken. But if that wasn't broken, there we go. It seals itself as you remove it. Look, that's tiny. It's no bigger than... It's not much bigger than a tea bag, is it? Look at that. That is minute. Well, I was going to do a, a, a bag of filth demo on this. Well, I will still demonstrate it, but I'm not going to put that much down. Oh, that is, that is minute, isn't it? Oh, dear. And also, I didn't clean inside because pretty poor filter here. Look. Eek. Let's, let's blow this muck out. The motor, well, this is where the suction comes from, from the bottom more usual you would have the motor here wouldn't you and you'd have a filter there but this is where the suction comes from on this machine and there's a, just a very basic coarse spongy well it is two layered look you can just about see the two layers there but you can also see eek, a lot of muck on that it's not like me to put things away dirty but after this video you won't be seeing this again not for a long time I don't think so let's just clean that, so clean that muck off there, pop that back in. So that is your motor protection filter. There's not going to be much protecting of the motor with that filter. It will stop any larger debris if it gets past the bag from getting anywhere near the motor, but it won't protect it from any finer dust. Can you put the bag back on now? There, oops, hang on a minute. That's it. Click it in. It won't, it doesn't have a click. And then we've got your final filter. How many? It says it's six stage filtration, so I'm not sure how many layers the bag has. It's a pure filt bag, so that, I don't know if it's a four layer bag or three, but you'd think if the bag has four, ah, unless they're classing that filter I just showed you because it's got a black layer and a whiter layer, perhaps they're classing that as two layers of filtration, so it could say three five, six possibly. How do you get this off? I know it comes off. Oh there we go. It's under the filter. Hmm, that's a lot to see. The motor's under there somewhere. Whoops. Here's the exhaust filter. Little bits. It's barely being used but there's a tiny bit of carbon dust on that. I expect I can wash that, but i um, not sure. Come on, go back. Well, that's it, that's it. Got a lot to see in there. ABS plastic. It does seem, yeah, it seems strong, I must say. Plastic seems quite good quality compared to a lot of the plastic that many, many vacuums are made out of. The best plastic I've personally experienced on a modern vacuum cleaner is the plastic that SIBO use. It's better than the Miele plastic. I don't know what the difference is, how it's manufactured or it's, it uses a different raw material. But anyone who's got a SIBO and a Miele and you sort of go like that, the SIBO just feels so more solid. The plastic is nicer somehow. Anyway, there we go, that's the little micro space. Let's pop the hose on. That fits in a locking 
position we've got a locked padlock and an open padlock and we just need to line up there's an arrow look at that big arrow there can you see it just about it's very hard to try and judge where, where, you, where you can see from the oh there that's it can you just about see that arrow anyway you need to point that arrow to the open lock and then twist it to the closed locked position so that's the hose on obviously it does swivel either side so it swivels at the cleaner end and it swivels at the handle end okay oh Mike hang on yes I know I know I've not shown you have I what makes this cleaner a little bit different to most vacuums on the market is the carry strap so it's a very strong material it's sort of stuff similar stuff to seat belts um, uh, I would say made of and if you look closely, you can see the little Hoover logo on there. Hoover design right. I think, if memory serves me correctly, it goes in that way. There we go, that's that side. And then if we turn the machine around, we can pop the other. Don't want to twist the, make sure the strap's nice and straight. Push it in. Hang on a minute, there we go. So there, we have the machine supported by its shoulder strap. I will be modelling that for you a bit later on. You'll see a full shot of that with the machine on my shoulder. Let's plug it in now. Actually, I'm going to have to take this off because obviously when you're using it normally, when you're pulling it along by the wheels, you don't want this attached to it because it'll just get in the way. So we'll take that off. Da -da -da. Did I tell you the model number of this? I'm not sure if I did, but I'll tell you again if you weren't listening. It's model number SC11, oh, SC110. That's it, that's the model number. Okay, whoops a daisy. <laughs> Shh, be quiet. Right, let's plug this in and switch it on. I can't remember how noisy or quiet this machine is. I don't think it's going to be particularly quiet. It's really a budget priced cleaner and uh, when vacuum cleaner manufacturers are making a machine to a budget, sound insulation tends to go out the window. But it may be quieter than some expensive Chinese made cleaners you can buy now. Let's find out, shall we? No, that is no <laughs> that's noisy. But uh, saying that, it doesn't have the high-pitched scream, does it? Let's try it again. I think, I think it moved on its own when I turned it on. The power of the motor does I don't know if that, I don't know if it did. Was it my eyesight? Let's check that again. It did, it definitely had, definitely had a kick to it, didn't it, when I switched it on. Well, the suction's okay, but it's not fantastic. Not brilliant. Let's attach these chrome tubes. At least, for, you know, for what would have been a budget vacuum, at least it's got chrome tubes. Now, they did actually provide this model free with the Hoover. Now, I don't know whether they renamed it. It was a Vortex design. And if you want to see the Hoover Vortex, whoops, that's on my channel. It was a Vortex design, but after the lawsuit for Mr. Dyson, Hoover had to change a few things and they had to rename the Vortex. It came out as Vortex Power, but then later versions were named Hurricane. And of course you can still buy a vacuum cleaner named a Hoover Hurricane, but it bears no resemblance to the original Hoover Hurricane cleaner. But there was one, it was in black, and it actually came with this model as a companion in black as a free gift. I'm not sure if it had auto flex rewind because I know there was a more basic model. I think it didn't have auto flex. It was a micro space and in black. I expect it had uh, plastic tubes as well. So that's something I remember from the not too distant past. I remember seeing them in Comet, which of course is a store we don't have anymore. It's gone but not forgotten just like Woolworths. 
Okay, mm, I don't really want to leave it like that, but I've put it on the parking back it, but it's at a terrible angle. It's hard to see from the angle I've got the camera, but <laughs> it's angled in such a way that it's, I think it's causing strain on this part and it would soon break. So I'll take that off. I don't like doing that. Okay, I'll get a little bit of filth from my bag of filth. It's a straight suction vacuum cleaner with a quite a basic cleaning head, so I'm not going to uh, hold out any hopes for it cleaning very well, but you never know. This little micro space might surprise us all. Well, I've put more dirt down than I was expecting to, but never mind. I still think it should fit inside this tiny, tiny bag, but um, I'm not sure. Anyway, in for a penny, in for a pound, as my probation officer often used to say. So I'm going to go backwards and forwards. You know the drill, if you're a regular viewer. If you've been with me since year dot, you'll know what I'm about to do. So here goes, let's see how efficient this little Hoover microspace really is. <laughs> Absolutely flabbergasted. My ghast has never been so flabbered. Look! <laughs> wow! That is not bad at all. Look at that! Can you Adam and believe it? I can't. I didn't think it would do so well. Obviously it's not ingrained dirt, it's surface dirt. But look! Oh, I mean, yes, critical, critical, as my critical eye is observing. At the, at the sides of the path, obviously the middle of the path, that's going to be the area that gets the best clean because that's where you've got the suction channel. Most of the suction is in the middle of the nozzle. And as you go further out, the suction lessens in most cases. So I can see Obviously it's got all the surface dirt, it's got the dust, it's got the, the couscous that's down here, it's got the rice particles that were down here. It's just not coked, first, first off anyway, it's not coked with some of these fibres. They're fibres from a wool rug and there might be some dog hairs. I can do, yes, I can see a few dog hairs here. But apart from that, that's not bad at all. Far better than I expected of the Hoover Microspace. Well, can't believe in this mess here, can I? I'm going to have to clean it up. So that's what I'm going to do. Pick the rest of this up. We'll have a quick go of the microspace on a hard floor, and then I'll have a bit of a jig around with the <laughs> microspace on my shoulder and uh, see how if, if effective it is at going up the stairs. And of course, if I've got it on my shoulder, I'll be able to whiz up the stairs, no problem. It won't matter about the length of the hose when I'm wearing the vacuum. Anyway, Better clean all this up now. Well, you find me in the kitchen now, and as luck would have it, I've already got some dirt down here. Now, as you can see here, there is a relatively clean path. That was cleaned using another vacuum cleaner, because I'm doing a lot of videos today. I just left it. I thought, well, I've 
I've done that demo, I'll get on to the next one, get on to doing the Microspace video. And I thought, I'll clean this up later. But luckily for me, I've got this vacuum cleaner to clean up this part that I didn't clean using the other vacuum. So I've got the carpet and floor nozzle on the hard floor setting. So a little bit dirty, obviously, from the, from the last demo. So now we've got the brush at the front lowered and we've also got a squeegee at the back. So I'm just going to pass the microspace backwards and forwards through this dirty part of the floor and we'll see how well it does. The bag will be pretty full I think by now but hopefully it will still have enough suction power to do this job. <laughs> It did better, it did better on the carpet, didn't it? A lot of muck trapped on there. And just out of shot, it's done the old snow ploughing effect. So the brush is basically, the brush at the front has basically swept a lot of the larger debris to the front of the nozzle. But as you know, that can be removed. It just means we have to angle the nozzle slightly. So I'm just going to clean up the rest of this side and this part. There's more dirt, you'll notice down here, well quite a bit more dirt actually, if I turn the camera, there is more dirt. So I'll keep that actually because I'm going to be doing another demonstration after this one. So that can be used on whatever vacuum cleaner I decide to demonstrate next. But for this video, whoops lazy, just turn that back. And we'll just clean, or well, hopefully attempt to clean anyway, the rest of this dirt. It's not 100% spotless, there are a few tiny bits, but you get the gist. It does okay. It seemed to do better on the carpets, but a few bits trapped on the side, but not too bad for an old bagless, not bagless. Oh, what was I mean? I didn't mean to say bagless. An old bagged, that was the word. An old bagged Hoover vacuum. It's not done too bad. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit of muck left in the nozzle, but all in all, that's a fair performance for such a small vacuum. Okay, let's go up the stairs and uh, I'll pop the carry strap on and we'll see how well we can clean stairs with this little vacuum cleaner. Stair cleaning is no problem with the Hoover Microspace. As you can see, it's securely attached to my person and now, with both hands free, I can direct my nozzle wherever I want to go. So, let's go up the stairs. Da, 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 da. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I can clean right up the stairs and beyond with a microspace safely on my strong, northern, broad shoulders. So there you go, the microspace. Ideal for doing your stairs, ideal for cleaning up high if you need to go up a ladder. If you've got a library in your mansion that has wall-to-wall -wall books right up to the ceiling, you'll be able to go up with a dusting attachment and dust the top of your complete works of Shakespeare with no problem. Thanks to the handy shoulder strap. Alternatively, of course, if you don't want to prance around like a Jesse with the vacuum cleaner, on your shoulder, you can actually sit it on the stairs like that using the conventional method. Or it's so light, you can just carry it by the carry handle with one hand while you're directing the nozzle with another. 
Before I finish this demonstration, there's two things I want to do. Firstly, let's have a look at the bag. I'm predicting it's going to be quite full. And the final thing, we'll just test the efficiency of the automatic cord rewind. So let's remove the bag door first. You don't even have to take the hose off. You can still take the bag door away with the hose still attached. And inside here, all the dirt that recently was all over the carpets and floors is now safely inside this bag. But I can also see quite a lot of fine dust around here. It's even bypassed the suction seal. There's a black seal all the way around here, but there's dust gone beyond that. Anyway, let's try and close that off as we remove it. Actually, there's still a fair bit of capacity in there. You're not supposed to fill them chocker block full. But I reckon that it would pick up another load of dirt, more or less. If I was to do the same demonstration I've just done with the same amount of dirt, I think it would still cope. It would still pick it up. It would still manage to collect it all in that pure filt bag. The dust compartment, it's a bit, well, there is some very, very fine dust in here, but I'm not sure if it was here before. But the little filter on the bottom, the little spongy filter, well, there's a couple of hairs on there, but it's remained fairly clean. So I think this bag has done a fairly good job of retaining that dirt. I can't really say whether the suction power reduced to a great degree when I was using the machine, but it still did the job. But I don't know why there's dirt around the edge here, but that, I don't know, that's possibly, to be honest, that's possibly the dirt that was in the air. I don't know, managed to get into there. I'm not really sure. Anyway, it's all for fun because you can't buy this vacuum cleaner if you want it. You may find a second hand one on eBay and, you know, if you're lucky, somebody might have one in their loft in its box, maybe a wedding present from years ago. Didn't use it. Cleaners like that do pop, on, pop up on eBay occasionally. You do occasionally get some rare gems. But, of course, the rarer the vacuum, the more expensive it tends to end up at. OK, that's the end of my demonstration of the Hoover Microspace. I hope that improves on the first video I did of this machine. I've gone into a little bit more detail for you. And all that's left to do in this demo is to unplug it. Just reach over, unplug the machine, press the auto cord rewind. I was going to do it with my hand, which you can do, but I will use my foot because they are supposed to be foot operated. I'm terribly sorry, these socks aren't brand new. They are a little bit worn, but never mind. I'll just use my heel for this part. I'll hold the plug because I don't want it bashing into the machine. Oh, <laughs> dear me. Come on. There we go. Oh no, you've done so well only to spoil it all at the end by not retracting the cable. Let's give you another go. Let's try it again. Come on. Come on. Everybody's watching. <sighs> yes, yes, go on. Go on. You can do it. Go on. Come on. Yes. No. Yes. <sighs> Meanwhile, <laughs> No, I think that's where it ends. I'll just have to help it along. <laughs> I do find that a lot of Hoover vacuums from this period, there we go, eventually. The flex rewinds were always a little bit sluggish, even on the Sensotronics, they weren't very good. There we go, there we go. So there we go, that's the plug. Tucked safely away. All the flex is stored inside the machine. Okay, that's it. If you like this video, <laughs> why not subscribe? And you'll be updated every time I upload a new floor care video. I don't just do old machines like this. I do current vacuum cleaners as well, machines you can buy in the shops now. But if you like your vacuums, this is the channel 
to subscribe to. I also have a Facebook page. Again, it's called iBasiac, so search iBasiac on Facebook and you'll see my Facebook page, a little companion to my YouTube channel. You'll also find the link below the video, so click on that and you'll be taken directly, fingers crossed, to my Facebook page. So until the next time, for me and the Hoover Microspace, it's goodbye.